What differentiates Grid Calculator Pro Edition and Adobe InDesign is how easy you can set up everything from a simple to a complex layout. After years of research and discussion with leading designers, I'm going to show you just how easy and fast you can create both a grid-based layout and a layout based on fixed margin values, which is a common way in the industry to set up layouts, and sometimes the only mathematical possibility. Quick Mode is the only setup mode where you can either fully or partially break free from the document grid. Of course, you don't have to break the document grid at all if you don't want to. Let's begin with a document grid based layout. In the next example, I'm going to show you how to work with side margins set to a fixed value. And in neither of these examples will I be applying image lines or working with text. I just want to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so uh, let's begin with making sure that we are working in the unit that we want to work in. Uh, we have millimeters, inches, points and pixels. I'm going to select millimeters here. Then we have the document width and the document height. Once we've confirmed that we are happy with these settings, enter your desired letting value. I'm just going to stick with 12 here. And you can see the applied value is 12.027 points. So once we've gotten this far, we actually have a grid that fits perfectly. And uh, we can continue in margins, columns and rows section here. Now, as I move along my margins here or edit them, they are going to jump an increment of the baseline grid for the top and bottom margin. And to the right here, we can see what the actual values are. Next, I'm going to edit my inner margin and my outer margin. Then we are going to set our columns here and you can select any column here that fits your project. So let me just select anything here and you see this button here. You can actually browse until you find a setting that you like. If you hold down the command key or control key on Windows, you can go backwards. So let's say that we're happy with these main columns here. There is another feature called sub columns. Now this is something that does not exist in InDesign per default and this is set up with guides. Let's say that you're working on a book and you want to set up columns for your index pages and uh, you can do that by dividing or splitting up the main column. So let me show you how that works. So these are actually guides that are placed within uh, a layer that you can turn on and off. Let me just remove those. And then we have uh, the rows. I'm just gonna select something here. And you can browse the different settings. Now, um, let's say that you're not happy with any of these combinations. You can simply edit uh, either the top or bottom margin or both. Then we're going to look what different options we have now. In many cases, you don't need to work with rows, but this option is there if you want to work with rows. Next, I'm going to show you secondary setup here. Let's say that you want to have different combinations for your columns you can actually apply secondary columns here, something that is not possible in InDesign itself. And this is also done with the help of guides placed on a layer here. So let's say that you're working on a um, certain story and you want to work with uh, two columns instead of three. You can actually do that without setting up a new master. You could do that all within the same master here. And the same applies with rows here. So let's go back to main setup here and simply set up some rows just for the sake of it. That's how easy it was to set up a layout based on the document grid. 
Now let's reset everything and um, set up a layout based on fixed margin values for the inner and outer margins. So I'm just gonna reset all these settings here. And uh, there's actually no difference between the first example and the second when it comes to the document setup for quick mode. But here in margins, I'm going to check this option called value here and simply enter the values for your side margins. For my inner margin, let's say that I want to have 15. And for my outer margin, let's say that I want to have 25. Now, we have not broken the vertical grid, so it still aligns with the uh, baseline grid here. As you can see here, columns, sub-columns, and uh, other options are not available for the vertical grid. We have rows here because we have not broken the grid vertically. So what you can do is you can go to custom setup here and you can set up your columns just as you want them to be. So you set up the number of columns here and the gutter. Another thing I want to show you is this field here shows the width per each column. And you can always come here even if you don't work with the value options and you could actually manipulate some of these values here and or if you just want to see how wide a column is or how high a row is you can just come to this custom setup section of the plugin we could also set up some uh, sub columns let's ignore that we can set up secondary columns now another thing I want to show you is uh, the ability to set up a type area grid. This is something that simply does not exist in Adobe InDesign because you have to work with, uh, when you work with grids in InDesign, you have to work with the document grid. So you cannot create a uh, custom grid for your type area, but with Grid Calculator Pro Edition, you can do that just fine. Now. This value here, 50, represents the number of lines within the type area here. And the width between each line is 3.4 millimeters. I'm not going to go into subletting here, but basically you could slice the letting in, in uh, multiple values to work with a finer grid. So let's say that we want to work with a type area grid here and we want our columns and everything else to fit within this grid here. So what I could do is I could just enter the number of columns I want to work with and I could take this value here 3.4 and enter it for my gutter. Now as you can see here it does not fit at all. Now if I really want to work with the four columns what I could do is I can go to these uh, values here and my option is to either edit these values or because we are working with fixed values here what I could do is I could edit this value here until we find something that is almost a perfect fit and and I can bet you that this is going to fit perfectly here if I just edit my gutter value for my column. So if I enter the this value here, it should fit perfectly. Yeah. So uh, let's continue with uh, secondary columns here. And I'm going to enter the same value or I could multiply it by two or any other value. As we can see, it does not fit with a combination of three columns. Let's go back to the same gutter value. Now 
Now sometimes it simply won't fit mathematically. So what you do is you continue editing the grid until you find a combination that looks as if it would work. Now let's go with five secondary columns instead. And this almost looks like it will work here. So let's edit our gutter values here. That fit perfectly. And that fit perfectly as well. So what you need to do is sometimes play around with the values and uh, in many cases it will fit after some playing around with it. Now, we could also play with our rows here and we can see that our letting value in millimeters are 4.243 millimeters. So I'm going to enter that for my gutter here. And then I'm going to simply have to play around until I find a combination that that fits. Sometimes it won't and I um, will need to change the top and bottom margin. But I want to show you something here. Because we are not breaking the uh, vertical grid, what you can do is you can go back to main setup here and you can get all the combinations that actually fit within the top and bottom margin. So it makes life a little easier when you have that option to select whatever you want here. And you can basically just edit the top and bottom margin until you find a um, combination that fits. 